Hey guys, so today we're going to be doing a DIY project and it is going to be a big ol' fluffy tutu. I got inspired to make this tutu right here because I was making tutus for my little sister-in-law and I was like, you know what, it'd be fun to make a tutu. I, a, a tutorial on how to do it. Now, I know there are plenty of tutorials on how to do a no-sew or a little-sew um, tutu. As you can see, they are pieces put together to make this big old fluffy tutu skirt. So, so much fun, and it's really, really inexpensive to make. I know that when I was looking at tutus at Hobby Lobby for little toddler type girls they were like $22 and even at that when they were 50% off after their marked up jacked up price it was $11 and let me tell you for $11 I could make two awesome customized color tutus um, and for this this only cost me for because this is an adult size this cost me a about um, maybe seven ish dollars, less than ten dollars for sure. But if you go online, they're really, really expensive. It just takes some cutting and some of your time, and then you will be a fairy princess in a couple hours. So, if you guys want to see more and want to know how to make one, then stay tuned. So, the materials that we're going to need are tool. I got the kind where it is already on a spool. It is a lot easier. I can tell you or show you guys how to make it by buying the tool off of bolts. So you have to make your own strips. Um, fortunately, unfortunately, there's, there's some benefits to buying it like this. It is cheaper to buy it on here and make strips yourself. The downside is that you have to make strips yourself. Uh, the upside is when you buy it like this, there are a lot of fun, fun, fun colors uh, that, that just doesn't come in this. Especially when it, you try to buy this at stores. Uh, they usually come in very popular like wedding colors because it's usually made for weddings and other special occasions. So like really, really funky colors are really hard to come by. But with this one, um, right here, I do have, you know, like, there are different colors, and it doesn't, it, not everything in this color spectrum comes on this. So it's up to you. I can tell you how to make it either way. But for simplicity's sake, I'm going to show you guys how to make it from tool on a spool. These are 6 inches wide by 25 yards long. You might be thinking, that is a lot of material. But the thing is, is that when you make it, you have to consider how long you want it, uh, who you're making it for. If you're making it for small children, then you're not going to use as much. And, uh, yeah. So, and it just really depends on how many colors you use. The more colors you use, the more you can get out of each one of them because you could probably make multiples. So, if you're only doing one color, if you're doing two colors, then you're going to need, you know, more uh, and it, again, it also depends on how fluffy you want to make it as well. Second thing you're going to need for my version of making this kind of uh, almost no sew, but maybe a little bit of sewing um, tutu is elastic. Now, if you watch other tutorials, other gals may have suggested to use ribbon. For me, I just like to slip it on and slip it off instead of just tying it on and tying it off. So I got elastic. Now this is a quarter of an inch elastic. It's very narrow. The reason why is because I pull this, I do as when I show you guys, I'll show you that it's a slip knot. And so uh, I and I pull it very tautly, um, or very tight. So there's no need for me to, you know, have wide elastic. If you choose, if you want to have more of a band, and you feel like that would be more comfortable for you, then you, by all means, you can always. This is a, a wider elastic, and as you can see, I didn't pull it as taut, 
and so you can still have it band and you know whatever now if you like I said if you decide to make it like me or you decide to pull and make the the knot very tight there's no point you're just kind of stretching out the elastic is which is a mistake that I made the very first time I made um, one of these tutus so it was kind of a waste of time and money and effort to you know buy the wide elastic whenever I just needed something that stretches and I'm gonna pull tight anyway and then some very sharp scissors now it doesn't matter where you get your scissors from uh, if you don't have very sharp scissors I recommend go get some especially when you're cutting things like fabric and especially tool you need some sharp scissors now these are very cheap scissors these are probably from like big lots or like the dollar store but they're brand new so they've never touched anything else uh, but fabric and so these are are though they're cheap they haven't touched paper so they're not dull you need sharp scissors sharp scissors just make everything look better they're not going to tatter the material they're if they're it's just going to be it's just going to make your life a lot easier because even though we're using tool on a spool we are still got to cut each piece um, accordingly and then last but not least uh, it's optional if you decide to make it a sewing thing then you're gonna need either needle and thread or you're gonna need your sewing machine to make a waistband if you guys sew then you already know how to make a waistband but I'm gonna still show you guys how to do it and you're gonna need a method of measuring when you cut out the tool so I am going to be using my um, cutting board which looks like this, but you're just welcome to use tape, a tape measure, a ruler, whatever. I'd say for this kind of project, you need at least a yardstick uh, or longer. Yardstick would actually work because this isn't even quite a yard. Um, I am, I used to be an avid sewer, so I actually have one of these, but honestly, you don't have to have one of these. You need to at least have, I would say like a yardstick, and I think every household always has a yardstick, if not, uh, a ruler would work just as fine. It's just a little bit harder to work with because it's not that long. So let's get started and I'll show you guys exactly. I'm going to put you up close to how I'm going to be working this and I will let you guys see what I'm doing. So stay tuned. Okay you guys, so I tilted my camera so you guys can see exactly what I'm doing. So first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to measure um, how wide or long it is going to be so quick fun tip is people think that their waist is down here where like your hip bone is but your natural waist what I'm keyword is natural waist is actually two inches above your belly button so that is the smallest part of your abdomen that goes in so to give you that hourglass look so I like to actually lay my two tubes right there and actually what people consider as high waist that's what where it usually lands if you already know how um, big your waist is you can always just measure it out and cut it but I like to just kind of whatever loosely if you guys can see loosely measure around your waist and then give yourself then take that and cut it there. Now you're going to be like, well, you said you're going to sew or um, glue the things together, but let me show you a secret about how people make waistbands. So usually how people make waistbands is that they will take the exact measurement of their thing and they're going to overlap it by an inch, so or around an inch. And that is how you can make something, um, whatever make it um, make a waistband for usually pajama pants and things like that they usually use an elastic band um, or people actually sometimes they'll measure an inch short so it'll be 
almost like two inches in. So you basically lose an inch because again, this is elastic, it will stretch to what it needs it to be. So don't worry about that. Now at this step, you can decide to hand sew down the elastic uh, and, and you know, to keep it together, or you can use a hot glue gun or fabric glue if you're gonna use any kind of adhesive fabric glue to um, adhere these things together. But for me, I actually have a sewing machine out. Um, I actually have a sewing machine on a desk in a room. I kind of call it my sewing room, but I share it with my husband. Uh, he has his computer techie stuff on another desk in that same room. So it's our recreational roomish type thing. Hobby room, I guess you could say. So I'm going to hop in there and I am going to do a quick stitch uh, and reverse stitch up and down a couple times to make sure that it's can be secure. You guys don't need to see that. This isn't a sewing lesson, so I will be right back. Okay, so I am back, and as you guys can see, it is stitched. Um, you guys don't really need to see the stitching, so that is that. I got my thing. Mine is going to be kind of loose-ish, just because... Um, I just, y'all you know, want to be fluffy, I want to be comfortable, and because I'm using such a narrow band, it's just going to be fun like that. So, that is that. Next, we're going to take our tool. Um, so, I got the 6 inch wide, it's going to look extra fluffy. They also sell, I believe, 3 inch wide as well, just depending on where you got, you get your tool. I got mine at Michael's, but, um, you can find it at Hobby Lobby, um, online, whatever. Um, it is, a, like I said, it is a little bit more expensive than if you, you know, bought tool and sh made strips yourself. But again, you're buying it for the convenience of the fact that is it is in long strips. So I am going to do it in this lime green, or I don't know what it's called. I don't know what the color is called whatever um in this green right here because it just seems like it shows up better on video and you're just going to decide how long you want to make your tutu for me i am going to be doing about 18 inches so that means if i want a thing that if I want a tutu that is 18 inches long I have to double up because it's gonna fold over and once I do a knot as well it's not gonna be exactly 18 inches long as well the knot is gonna take some of it as well so basically it's gonna be around 17 and a half inches so you're gonna measure out uh, double the length so in this case it's going to be a yard or three feet or 36 inches however you want to measure it it's all in the same so basically i like i already have the convenience of a mat like i said a yardstick is probably going to be better because especially if you're going to use exact same measurements that i'm going to be using then all you got to do is measure out a yard and then snip 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 cut measure out another yard and keep on going so in this case my board is only 23 inches long so I have to basically take it and pull and then when it is at 18 let me it's gonna roll on me 18 that's where I can cut it and then you're going to repeat this will be faster if you are a sewer or if you know somebody that quilts and you have a rotary cutter a rotary cutter is a thing that looks like a pizza cutter but it's for fabric and so here is my first strip and i'm gonna have to make this i don't know how many more times i would say probably i'm going to make this whole roll so i'm going to cut the whole freaking roll so that is that so just keep on going again I'm going to show you guys how to do that again this is simple just measuring but just in case you did not catch it the very first time 
if your measuring tool is not long enough, then you're just going to have to, you know, pull as many times. For me, I have to do it twice because my board is not long enough. So, oh, so then we're at 18 inches twice, or in this case, it would be a yard. If I had a yardstick, that would be great. And then cut down to make your strip. You don't have to make this super straight. The thing about tool, it is very, very, very forgiving. Um, you don't have to make it perfect. You don't, it doesn't have to be perfect as long as you try your best to make it as perfect as you can. But again, it doesn't have to be like totally, totally like pin straight, straight. So I have two strips. I'm gonna turn the camera off and do the others and I will be back to show you guys how to make the knot. Okay, so now as you guys can see, I have cut the two colors that I'm gonna be using today. So I'm gonna be using a shiny like lime green and a regular light pink. So take your band right here and put it around either a, uh, if you're lucky enough, you have a dress form or a mannequin, that's great. If you don't, put it around um, a pillow, something to where it's going to, you can just kind of like, um, I don't want to say anchor, but something that's going to make sure that it's not going to really, it's going to be stable and so you can work with it. It's not fun to try to hold on to this and tie onto it. So I'm going to be using uh, one of my couch pillows to be doing this. Hopefully my waist is not bigger than the couch pillow. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and slip this over the pillow. It shouldn't be too much wider. Uh, I've seen tutorials where uh, people will use the back of chairs to do it. So get the elastic on whatever you're going to be using. So I'm going to be using this. So as you guys see the strips, I'm going to take them off so I can show you guys exactly how to make the knots. So what we're going to do is, for simplicity's sake, we're going to take the green. We're going to take the tool strip that we have whatever we've cut and we're going to fold it in half so we have exactly half piece of tool right here and you see that I have this right here I have a loop um, I think they call this a slip knot so what you're going to do is I like to put it under under the elastic ah, it's kind of hard to do and what you're going to do is you're going to pull the ends through that loop and then pull again and ta-da! One of many knots you're going to have to do. So I'm going to show you that to you guys again. Um, so again. Yeah. It's going to lay a certain way, so there you go. So, ta-da. So, let's try to see if we can get a close-up of how to do this. So, we have our tool that is folded perfectly in half. We're going to slip it underneath like that. And then, yeah, see the the loop we're going to take the ends and pull it through like that and then pull pull on it and then we have our second knot so the knots don't need to look pretty I know this knot probably looks nicer than this knot and Blah, 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 yada, 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 whatever. If you're particular, then you can mess with it, make it lay flat, whatever. So it looks like that. For, for me, I am going to be um, putting a pink 
So every other one is going to be, so it's going to be green and pink, green and pink, green and pink. And I will be back with the finished product. So, yeah. <laughs> so if you guys want to see it again, I'm going to do it one more time with the pink. So we're going to take a pink. We're going to fold it in half. It does not have to be perfect in any way, shape, or form like that. We're going to slip it underneath the elastic. See, and then we have a hole right here, and we're going to pull it through like that. And then press the whammo bammo. We have a pink piece. So you guys can already see it coming together. Um, so yeah, I will keep on working on this and show you um, and let you see the final product. Okay, so I wound up having to use uh, one and a half rolls of each color. So I wound up cutting, like I said, I had to cut a yard each, a yard strip of each. And unfortunately, those rolls from Michael's are only 20 yards, so I could only cut 20 strips from each roll. So I had to use another half of each color. Thank goodness I bought two of each color. And so I did 60, did I? No, yeah, I wound up having to cut 60 strips all together. Uh, this project should not take you that long. It should probably only take you about, once you figure everything out, I think it should probably take you about like, an hour and a half, no more than two hours, because I don't think it should take you more than a minute to tie one thing on. It's the cutting and all that stuff. So this right here, oh man, I wish it could pick up the color a lot better. But this right here is the final product. And do you see how I tied them like really, really, I hate how it looks like on my viewfinder. It looks like the green is uh, yellow, but it's not. The tighter that you tight it, the flippier it's going to flip out. And the fact that I use six inch wide tool makes a difference. This right here is about three inches wide. And it's because I had to cut the colors out myself. Um, I don't recommend you cutting your own tool from the bolt. It's not that much cheaper. But like I said, if there are definite colors that you want, then go for it. This is for my little sister's birthday party, and she loves. If you can't, get, if you haven't figured out the color theme yet, it's frozen. <laughs> so, you know, I have uh, colors from Anna's dress and Elsa's dress. So, as you can see, like the green, the blues, and the burgundies, more Anna. The silver and the light. Blue is more of the Elsa, and I'm not quite done with it. There was also a piece of sparkly tool that I got, which is a hot mess to use, but it's super, super fun. But here is the finished product. If you're wondering how many strips you will need, I would say for every, if you tie the way that I tied it, I would say for every... Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Every two knots is about half an inch. So uh, I think I tied it a little tight on the elastic. So I would say make the elastic kind of snug when you measure it on yourself, not as loose as I said it would, which should be. And, um, when you start kind of pulling on the elastic, it kind of doesn't, it still gives quite a bit, but yeah, this is kind of loose on me, but I think it's still really, really super fun. So I would say for every two, uh, for every inch of your waist, I would cut out two. So I think I stretched this out a little bit, so I think I could have gotten away with 50 something pieces instead of 60 pieces but because I don't have a 30 inch waist but 
the more that you put on here, the fluffier it is. And I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. This is my first DIY. Let me know if you'd like to see more DIYs. I'd love to share what I know crafting-wise. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye!